Hi everybody, my name is Juan Carlos Escobedo. I'm an artist living in San Antonio and working here as well. I make cardboard and paper clothes as you all can see here. And today what I'm gonna be showing you is how to make a Cordobes hat. A Cordobes hat is usually a hat with a wide flat brim and a flat top. Once I show you how to make that, we're gonna be transforming it into a miniature landscape. Now that landscape is a representative of a place that I used to live in when I was a child. So I'm choosing materials, little homes and objects that I'm very familiar with. And the reason why I do that is because I'm pretty proud of where I'm from and I want to showcase that. And hopefully by showing you the way that I make these little objects and attach it to this Cordobes hat, you can get some ideas on how to make your own Cordobes hat that represents you, where you're from, um, your neighborhood, your community. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> yeah. So first, let's go over some of the materials that we're gonna need. I am gonna be using this brown cardboard paper that I found. It is just a box that I cut up and unfolded. It's roughly 18 inches by 30 inches. I think that that should be enough to make this hat and all of the components that are part of it. Remember, it doesn't have to be cardboard. It could be any kind of material that is like this. So you can use a cereal box. Actually, that would be pretty cool because you can um, use the colors that are already part of the box. Uh, the next thing that we're going to be needing is a pair of scissors, something to write with, any color is fine, one thumbtack, <laughs> we're going to need some kind of string, wire, yarn, or twine, it doesn't matter what it is, we're going to need some wire, we will need hot glue gun and hot glue sticks, this is optional. We're gonna need some tape. So I'm using this U-Haul packaging tape because it's brown like the cardboard. Remember that the tape can be whatever color you like. I usually like masking tape because it's sort of like paper-like. You can use whatever you want. Some toothpicks and maybe lollipop, lollipop sticks. A ruler. And an X-Acto knife. Now the X-Acto knife is optional. You do not have to use this. If you do use this, make sure that you ask permission from your parents with this and the hot glue gun as well. So first let's go over the parts of a Cordoba's hat. Um, for this particular hat, there's two components. So basically the cylinder shape that holds the hat on your head with a flat top, and then the brim that keeps the sun off of your eyes pretty much, and it's also flat. Once we finish the structure of the hat, what I am going to do is I'm gonna add uh, some flat mountains along the brim of the crown, right? And I'm also going to be adding a little house right in front of them that won't be flat, but it can be if you wanted to. I'm gonna make it more three-dimensional so it's gonna be sticking off of the, um, the crown. And then I'm gonna be adding these lampposts using toothpicks and popsicle sticks and also this little dead tree. So this is a home that um, I grew up in, in Chaparral, New Mexico. And so we'll see how close I can get to it. Now this is, remember, fantasy, so it doesn't have to be exactly like this. This is just a rough plan. If we decide that afterwards we wanna add more stuff to it, we totally can. So just remember, this is a rough sketch. Um, you can add or remove as needed. For the brim, what you're gonna be needing is your cardboard material. Remember, it could be any kind of material that is cardboard-like, so it could be mat board. It could also be cereal boxes um, that are glued or taped together. Um, it's up to you. I'm just using this material because I personally like it. The cardboard is nice, it holds up, and also it's sort of similar to the color of my skin, so I want to continue using it without necessarily painting it, but you can paint it. You're gonna need a ruler, you're gonna need something to write with, and a thumbtack, and a string of any kind. Usually the brim across is roughly 14 inches, as you can see from the ruler. So what I did is I divide that in half. I cut a string that's roughly seven inches. I placed this, a spot right in the middle of, or on the cardboard, and I went around and made a circle, okay? So that's going to be for the brim. Once you get to the circle or the head, the hole that your head goes in, then what you need to do is you need to shorten that string. And that string can be shortened roughly to like three and a half or four inches. Um, the average adult's head is roughly, I don't know, 
like seven inches across. So you can go slightly bigger or slightly smaller. And now what we do is we cut. Once we cut out the outer edge of the brim, what we need to do is cut the hole where our head sits. So I'm cutting a little incision using the scissors and then cutting out that hole. hole was too small, no biggie. What I'm doing is I am just freehanding a line or a circle around the circle that I made and cutting it so it's a little bit bigger. This seemed to help. Uh, remember, you can adjust as needed. Now that we have the brim and the hole fits our head appropriately or how we want it to fit, what we need to do is find or create the crown. So what's going to hold uh, this hat on our head. So the first thing that I like to do is I want to create the top of the of this hat or of the crown and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this hole that we've created and trace it on uh, the other half of the cardboard that was left over. Now what we need to do is create the crown. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the same cardboard. So I told you guys I'm going to need all of the cardboard. I'm going to measure roughly three and a half inches down and go from there. What I'm doing now is I'm going to cut along the lines that I created and I'm going to use that exact same uh, strip of cardboard to create another one because it's not long enough and this way I can create uh, the crown. What I'm doing now is I'm going to attach both of these strips of cardboard together using a little bit of hot glue and then I'm going to make sure that they are stuck together using my brown tape which I love. What I'm doing now is I'm going to use the ruler so that I can sort of soften this strip of um, cardboard and that way I can make it round. So I'm just uh, going along the edges and then I'm going to start attaching it, attaching the strip of cardboard using the hot glue and some tape along the edge of the initial circle that we created for the crown, the top of the hat. I'm using a little bit of the brown tape alongside the hot glue to start adhering the, the top of the hat to the strip that we created. Now remember that you don't need hot glue. The hot glue is helpful, but you can do this just using your tape. So um, keep that in mind. So as you can see, I have a little excess here. So what I'm doing is I'm just cutting off. The, the excess and taping it down with my brown tape. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to tape all around the, the edge of this um, crown that we're creating so that way it's nice and secure. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to add one line of hot glue just because I do have it. But remember, this is optional. If you have tape, that should be enough. Now that we have our brim and the top of our hat or our crown, what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be attaching it. So what I'm gonna to try to do is line this up. As you can see, my circle is a little off, but it's okay. So now we have our hat. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be adding tape along the outside here and it'll give it more texture and then I will also add it in the inside. I'm actually gonna start in the inside because I think it would be easier. Now that I've secured the brim to the crown of the hat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start taping the outside just to give it a little extra texture and also just to secure it more.
So now that we have the hat and it is secure with tape and if you want to use hot glue to also secure it, you may. What I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna add to the top of this. So I'm gonna add a mountain scape that goes across and still using the material that we have. What I'm doing right now is I'm adding or cutting these zigzags along the edges of this cardboard, creating these strips because they remind me of the Franklin Mountains that are close to Chaparral, New Mexico, and also um, El Paso. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to peel off the layer of some of these so that way I can expose the under part of the cardboard and get different texture. Once I have enough of these strips, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start uh, sticking them to the brim of this hat. So one method is to use hot glue, uh, but you can also just attach it using little pieces of rolled up tape. So again, if you don't have hot glue, tape is totally acceptable and it will definitely stick. If you haven't noticed, um, I really love hot glue. I think it's the greatest invention known to man. I don't know who invented it. I should probably know this. I'm gonna do my research. I will find out. I love them. Thank you for inventing hot glue. Now that I have uh, the structure of the hat and then the mountains um, glued down to be sort of like the, the brim band, what I'm gonna do is I am going to now create or recreate a miniature home that I used to live in. The, ho the original home that I lived in was not a miniature, it was a full-size home. I don't know why I said that it was a miniature home. What I'm actually doing is creating a miniature. Anyways, uh, it was in Chaparral, New Mexico. Chaparral is a really dry desert area, but it has beautiful skies. What I'm doing now is I'm going to cut out the windows and the door using an X-Acto knife. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create the back part of this house by tracing it and then cutting it out. Remember that you don't have to cut out the windows and the doors if you just wanna draw them on with pen or marker or pencil, that's up to you. doing now is I'm going to attach everything using these small rectangles that I cut out and, and hot gluing. Remember, you could also use tape. Uh, so these are the sides of the house. Now that the sides are attached, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out a strip of cardboard that's a little bit thicker than the the house or the top the width of the house and cut it out and then attach it as a roof one thing to remember is that i'm not like a mathematician so i am guesstimating and i suggest that you do the same these aren't exact measurements this little house actually came out a little wonky which is fine because it reminds me of my original home What I do now is I'm going to do, use a little hot glue uh, to attach the house that I made to the brim of the hat. And then I'm also going to give this house a little texture by cutting into the front of it using my X-Acto knife and um, peeling off a section of the cardboard. So I've recreated this house many times more than I can remember, but every time I do it, I'm like, this is so cute! So this is the hat with the house, the mountains in the back, and now we're going to be making some electrical fences or electrical posts that go all the way around the rim. There's a couple of ways that you can make electrical posts. Basically, you just need one standing um, vertical stick and then two horizontal that go along that way. When I make uh, electrical posts, it's pretty simple. All I do or have is one line that's vertical and two, horizontal lines that go across. And so what you can do or what I use is sometimes lollipop sticks or toothpicks or a combination of both. Now, these lollipop sticks that I have, they're a little bit too thick. I'm gonna use them, but I'm gonna split them in half using my X-Acto knife. Now, that can be a little dangerous, so be careful if you're gonna do that. You don't have to split them in half, um, but I am just to have more. 
I definitely edited this part heavily. I actually spent way too much time splitting these popsicle sticks, um, but I'm glad I did. With the toothpicks, it's the same concept, except that I am not going to be splitting it in half. Uh, but what I am going to be doing is I'm just going to be cutting the toothpicks. And I was going to use my X-Acto knife, but for this, I'm going to just use my scissors. I'm going to cut off a bit of the tip so it's not as pointy. I'm going to cut maybe the toothpick into three sections. What I'm going to be using to put this together is little strips of tape. So again, I know I keep emphasizing the tape, but I just want to give you options. This isn't my favorite way to create an electrical post, but it is pos possible. It's a little wonky, but it's okay. I am going to make the rest of them using hot glue. So these are the final result for the antenna and what I'm going to be attaching to the brim. What I'm doing now is I'm using a sharp tool, so this X-Acto knife to create a little hole where this electrical post is gonna go, adding a little hot glue and sticking, sticking it on there. So I'm gonna place all of the electrical posts uh, all around the brim. Hello, we're adding electrical posts. Hello, these electrical posts are driving me nuts. Even though the electrical posts always give me a little trouble, they always end up looking way too cute, so I'm happy that I'm adding it. Now that all the electrical posts are stuck on the brim, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little twine to attach so that it looks like the electrical wires. Oh my god, and also be patient with yourself when you're doing this, when you're attaching the wire, it gets a little intense. In addition to the gold twine, I'm also adding this gold uh, wire that I had at my house. This part is always a little tricky, so if you are including the electrical posts in on your hat, uh, be patient with yourself. Uh, sometimes they fall over, sometimes you have to re-glue them, so just keep that in mind. I have a lot of practice doing this, and I also was able to edit this video so that you're not seeing the mistakes, but plenty of these did pop off or fall off, so again, be patient with yourself. You're doing amazing. You're doing amazing! Once we finish attaching the wire, the next thing is adding more features that look like the landscape that I remember. I want to make the dead tree that is going to be attached to the front by the house. I bought, I found a bunch of sticks in my backyard. What I'm going to do is I'm going to attach them, hot glue them together to make a tree and then stick it on. Okay, now that we have our tree, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a place for it. What I'm thinking is probably going to be right here. We could leave this hat the way it is, or we can embellish it a little bit. What I'm thinking is that I don't like these markers that are here that we left from the beginning when I was tracing it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make little brown, brown grass and then attach it to the brim and maybe add some of this twine to it. I also think because this part is sort of blending into the mountains, maybe I'll make some clouds, tiny clouds that are attached to that. And also I want to deal with the bottom. There's a lot of information here at the bottom, it's all red. And what I did is, well, I found these flowers that I might attach to it. Now, again, this is optional, um, but basically this is the structure of the hat. You could stop here or you can begin to embellish. I'm gonna embellish more because for me, more is better. So look for the final result. All right, so after working on this hat, for a few more hours and actually I took a break. This was the end result. So I ended up uh, covering the bottom with tape instead of um, adding the flowers down here. I added the flowers to the tree and then I added some clouds to create a little bit of contrast between the brown house and the brown mountains. 
I also added, I found this brown uh, paper wax, um, or wax paper, I mean, and I cut it into a little fringe and then I added it to make it look like grass. Now remember, um, I know that the video is short. The actual time that it took me to finish this in total was about six hours, maybe seven hours. So remember to take a break. Remember that you can leave it for a couple of days and come back. It's not going to be a quick uh, project, but hopefully when you do finish it and you add the uh, landscape markers that remind you of your uh, landscape or your community that you end up with something that you love. Thank you all for being patient with me and for letting me show you how to make this Cordobes hat. I hope you enjoy it and have a good day.